board um, to vote on item C1, um, Finance and Golf Committee, Home Road Municipal Retailers Occupation Tax and Home Road Municipal Service Occupation Tax. With that, I'll entertain a motion or a, um, I'll call the committee the whole meeting to and call the meeting to order and ask that the clerk please call the roll. Christy Kammer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Daney? Here. Gabrenya? Absent? Here. Ranky? Present. President Wallace? Here. Finally, found it. Um, all right, so the uh, community, first item is this evening is the Community and Economic Development uh, Committee, uh, Chairman Gabrenya. Um, who was absent this evening, uh, last minute absence. So I will um, take over that Victory Center amendments to annexation agreement and PUD ordinance, and I will turn it over to Jim. All right. We've talked about this, I think, quite extensively yeah. already. Yes, uh, Mayor. This is the second time you've seen it. It's coming back from the Plan Commission. As you remember, Victory Center wants to refinance their existing facility, both the independent living and the supportive living center. Um, in doing so, with the type of financing they're getting from HUD, the current covenant uh, needs to be uh, changed in order for the covenants to be revised to be subordinate to the new financing. The petitioner has drafted the covenants. Um, this uh, went to the plan commission. The plan commission recommended approval of the amended covenants and because of the way the structure is, there's also an annexation agreement that also needs to be amended to include and reference the uh, change in the covenants. Um, that's it, plain and simple. It got recommended for approval, and they're back prior to moving on to the public hearing for the annexation agreement, which needs to be published and put in on your agenda in April. Thank you, Jim. Does anybody have any questions about the um, Victory Center amendments? We've kind of talked about this at length. Okay, so it'll be the board's recommendation to go ahead and move it to the hearing? Yes. Yes. Yep. And for a final vote, too. For a final vote. Thank you. Next item on our uh, committee of the whole meeting this evening is under Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. And, uh, one moment here, please. I guess we have, you know, if there are any questions regarding, we have a handout that was given here to us by uh, Todd uh, for the budget review. Yeah, there's a few things. Open for discussion on it. Anyone? Thank you all for being here. There's a few things um, I wanted to talk about. I know um, it's not on this uh, sheet that we got here, but the, the village municipal parking lot. We take that out of MFT funds instead of taking it out of the general fund. We can. Uh, as far as MFT fund usage, we can use it on public lots. We cannot use it on employee lots. So the front lot, we would be able to use MFT funds, but on the south portion, we would not. Did we anticipate on doing that? Yes. And then one other thing um, are the, uh, the dump trucks with the plows. I know you mentioned that they would be replacing the 2008 uh, vehicles. Do you think that's something that we could push off a year? We could push it off. Um, the things that you run into are, you know, if, if those quit, uh, trucks go down, it's typically in the middle of a snow event, so it's not at the most uh, desirable time. But uh, can we push it off? Yes, we can. We could push it off. It just you run into the higher risk of downtime with older vehicles. Yeah. Do you know what page that is, Trustee Hopkins? It's number seven on your list. I know that, but that's 
Under streets, right? Under page 225 of 268. It's your page 225. Page 5 of the streets. Okay, so we, we've already, on, on the number 7 here, they've already removed reduced the two large dump trucks with plows. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't talked about oh. on our committee at last week's meeting. Okay. So, to be fair to the committee, I brought it up to Paula that I would be talking about it, so. I mean, as a general principle, I think we ought to extend all of our vehicle replacement periods, you know, even in the three, the three years for the squad cars to four. Um, I know that there's always the fear of reliability issues, but if we can kind of stretch those expenses out, uh, I think it's worth it. So I think it makes sense. Um, what if we did one of the trucks? Could we push, would it make sense to push one of the vehicles off until next year? Would there be enough redundancy built in if we do have a, a, bunch, a bunch of snow this winter, next winter? Yes. Yes, and we could take the worst of the two and replace it, and then we'd have, we'd, yeah, that, that's definitely doable. <clears throat> it seems to make it a little better than not having either one, right? right? Because then you've got an extra old truck and a brand new one. Right. I like that idea. What's kind of the value of one of these trucks? Do we, like, trade it in? Do we auction it? What's the process? typically put on the open off auction and we actually have done pretty well on reselling those and get a good good yeah. uh, money back on them. Now does that money go right back into the vehicle replacement fund? I believe so. Are we, do we get a deal if we buy two at a time versus one at a time? Is there any economic benefit to that? No, it's through the state so they have a locked in price. Okay. Well, I have, I have a question. Uh, about the uh, item number one, uh, simply because when we first had this brought to us, we as a board tried to listen to the administration, and uh, it came across that it wasn't it was a wasn't a needed item on the budget for the reimbursement program, tuition reimbursement program, and yet, so my my concern is that I, don't, I think we agreed that it wasn't being used, is that correct? The tuition reimbursement program, the way it's set up is um, it is at the discretion of um, the board and the administration um, to determine if the budget can support the tuition program for the year. So it's not a guarantee um, for reimbursement for um, tuition. But you, seem, but you seem to think it was something that could have been cut. Yes, I did. Right. Um, we had two applications, um, and I just thought it was something that we can cut. We didn't, rather than cutting um, that from our regular training budget, um, this is f two employees. So. And I thought the benefit would be broader. And so I think we need to revert back to your recommendations and as you came across initially, especially if it's only for two people. And I think that would be money well saved for this year's budget. I, I think we invest a tremendous amount of money in training and professional memberships. I know that the village gets some benefit from those things, but I feel like we heavily invest, perhaps a little bit too heavily invest in those types of things. So I'm, I'm very comfortable cutting that tuition reimbursement. And I was actually kind of shocked when I saw this because when we were talking about it, I thought it was $4,000. Maybe that was just the, de the department that we were looking at, um, or maybe it was late in the evening and I, and I got confused, but I don't remember it being $15,000. I remember it being four. Yeah. The whole pool is 15. Yeah. I, I, I think we should, we should strike that. I agree. Well, I know that I'm probably the lone person up here again stating this, but uh, I totally disagree with uh, curtailing any, uh, anything with tuition reimbursement. I think it stimulates the employees, to, or the staff members, to continue their education, and they bring that back to the village. And uh, I know that the, the IT guys did something very re remarkable, and my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that they were able to save 
the village seventy thousand dollars by implementing a new program, which I'm totally. Uh, it's something that I wouldn't have any knowledge of, but you know this may not have had anything relative to tuition reimbursement. But the fact remains is that we have to train our people, we have to train our police department, we have to train our staff. And to take that away from the individual and not allow them to do that, I think it's wrong. And for $34,000 that we're, we're talking about, it's a drop in the bucket considering the budget that we have. And honestly, I think you're all wrong. So thank you very much. I agree with everything you said, but you have to understand that I think we need to do something. The state cut our funding by four hundred thousand dollars and you know what we're gonna just, do we can't just keep on you know we're gonna spending do we're levels. gonna have a municipal sales tax okay anybody else i just think, i think it's something that we can revisit in other years but it, and, not, and, and if yep, it, yep. and if Absolutely. the village administrator had come back and said well we definitely want this i'm all ears but i'm taking her recommendation which we do as a board as a board, we try to take the recommendation of the administration. They're the ones working with this day in, day out. And so when Paula says this could be a cut, I'm listening. She understands this. Okay. I understand where you're coming from. I just disagree. Okay. Anybody else have any other comments on the, um, the items on the sheet here? So for item number two, um, the total civic funding for the year, I, I know that it was the consensus of the board at the last meeting that it remained constant. I think we should consider cutting, even if it's a, a, a modest percentage, because we've talked about it in previous years. If we're going to be asking for a sales tax, then I, I think we ought to think about cutting this uh, back some. Which one's that? Uh, number two, two, civic funding. I mean, I don't think the village should be in this business uh, to begin with. I understand the value here, but. I, I think we we should cut this. I agree. I think when we originally put this uh, program together was because we didn't have any structure for application, which is the reason we put this together. But it was clearly my understanding, and the reason I voted for it was that it was going to be a declining balance. I think it has declined. I think when we before we put anything in, I think it was well into the fifty, sixty thousand range. Absolutely. So I think. We all should understand that we have cut this. Um, is this not the same exact amount we paid out last year? Last year, but years pre prior to having the actual application process. Right, because it was freewheeling and it was anybody who could, you know, slip into the budget. Yeah, yeah. Um, frankly, <clears throat> and that's the, that, that was the whole purpose of the, the application process, so that we knew who was coming in and what they were going to do, and they could prove what they were going to do with the money. Um, I, I don't think that it's, it's a stretch to continue to cut it. Um, I think all the civic groups have a sense um, that we wanted to cut it. Even if we cut it 10%, I think it would say a lot. Probably, probably bidding low, but uh, I think 10% is reasonable. I disagree with that one just because of the fact that, again, we have dropped this number probably, I don't know, you'd have to look up the number, um, Madam Administrator, but I bet we've cut this in half since we started the new program. Um, some of these groups uh, are attempting to do a lot, and I, I totally agree with the premise of having them be self-sufficient at some point, but some of these groups do a lot for even the downtown area now. Um, if, if we're going to cut anything, I think we all saw the budget on the 4th of July committee. They could certainly afford not to get that $12,000 that we're providing. Um, they're very self-sufficient. Um, so the goal of these civic uh, organizations is to, is hopefully they will become self-sufficient or measure how much they're providing to create the community for our village. So I think a lot of them do create that sense of community. Um, and <coughs> and that, I, I think that's, that's where I stand on it. I think if we leave it alone this year, I'm okay with that. And I am too. I think it brings a lot of uh, uh, value to the community for as far as just community activities. And I agree that it'd be great if we could get to the point where they would simply be self-sufficient. But um, <coughs> I think Heritage Days, the 4th of July, all bring a lot to the community, lots of people, um, which benefits us as a village, just as the name and 
the value of the city and what people do here, and I think there's something to be said for that too. But ultimately, you know, yes, if they could be self-sufficient, uh, that would be a good thing. But for now, I agree. I think keeping it where it's at, at least this year, uh, letting them know, putting them on notice, perhaps that we would, in the years years to come, be looking at reducing things, if that's if that's the consent of the board, would make sense. One of the problems we'd have if we cut this, and I, I agree, I don't think we should cut it. One of the problems we would have if we did is the fact that some of these civic organizations are, have already made plans for the activities that are occurring this year. And now if we say, you know, there's no support from the village, you know, it's, uh, it, it kind of leaves them in a really bad situation. So consequently, you know, we had talked about revis revisiting this next year. Maybe we could do it again at budget time. But I think at this point in time, people are, these, some of these civic organizations, I can't speak for them all, but I would think are planning on, on the donation that they're getting from the village. So consequently, I would uh, not be in favor at all of cutting this at this point in time. Well, I, I, we have that same exact conversation. I don't find that to be a valid point at all because we have that same conversation every year. And so at some point, you know, we can't just say, well, next year we're going to fix it. Oh, well, next oh. year we're going to fix it. Oh, well, next year we're going to fix it. You know, at, at some point, these organizations need to be on notice. And, and I thought it wasn't you. I thought Valerie was had reached out to them and, and, uh. and talked to them. And, and I'm, I don't think a I don't think a t even a 10 percent reduction means all of a sudden the Heritage Days is going to fold up. I, I don't get that sense that any of these organizations is going to, uh, you know, we, if we applied that 10 percent cut all across the board, I don't think anybody's going to be particularly hurt by it. I agree. I don't, I don't know if they're really getting the, uh, the idea that we're trying to reduce this because we have uh, Heritage Days that would receive 5,000 last year is now asking for 35. So they, they keep increasing. Um, I, I think what we may need to look at, if we want to leave it alone this year, fine. Next year, if we do make any contributions, it should be to their fundraising company so that they get the message that they need to go out and get some kind of fundraising company to help them instead of coming to the village and saying they need $35,000, which we can't afford. It's going to be probably 100 years before the state fix themselves, and <laughs> who knows how much they're going to keep taking out of our pocket. I think all the civic organizations, most of them I attend and go to, and um, I, I would be... You know, uh, I... If, a 10% cut, like Trustee um, Ranke is suggesting, is $3,000 spread across those all yeah. those organizations. I don't think it would be um, uh, difficult for those organizations to continue with that de minimis kind of cut, and therefore they know that we're trying to reduce this, but it's not a, a shock to their programming. Um, and I would also say that you know, the, the application form clearly states that this is not a guarantee that you will get what you're asking for. It's not a guarantee that you'll get anything. So um, I'm, I'm comfortable in making that, you know, spread that $3,000 cut across all those groups. I don't think it's a, a huge blow. I think the general consensus of the board right now is leave it alone. I don't think we have to cut it. Yeah. We had response from a number of people here, and it seems to be the majority of the board wants to leave it alone, so I would I would be in favor of cutting it 5 or 10 percent. And as Paula said, $3,000 over these organizations is not a large amount of money. Organization. Um, it, it's 3000 across all the yeah. things that we fund. Can take a straw poll. So in other words, it's not going to stop but prevent us from having fireworks on the 4th of July. No, that wouldn't stop anyway. It's the other ones that... Heritage Days and things like that that w w would probably jeopardize because that's a lot of work these people put in. Yeah. It's a lot of work and they're, they're trying to find funding sources and it's difficult and I don't know how many folks up here have been on those boards, but it's not easy um, to put those things together on a nickel and a dime. Um, well, let's take a straw poll. We could send a message with a 5% reduction across the board. Is everybody okay with a 5% reduction across the board? We're, we're spending too much time on this already. I'll just say that I would not want to cut it at all, but we'll uh, we'll reduce it by five percent. Anything else, um, oh. Chairman? 
Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was making note here. That's that's all we have. Well, and, uh, we have other discussion. Uh, there's other discussion that we're still having. Question on item number eight. Um, are you, are we cutting the backup and disaster recovery system? Or is it, are we just moving the, the, the expenditure? We're, we're removing the expenditure from the budget. That's the item that was taken care of um, this year that he was able to do for less money. Okay. And we are cutting the council chamber's projector. Are yes. we moving that too? Yes, the, uh, the backup recovery was 40,000 and the video project, the projector was 20,000. That's where the 60,000 came from. That means I don't get to take that one home tonight? I know uh, Trustee Ranky brought up earlier about uh, vehicle replacement. Um, is it something that we could hold off on, the three vehicles in the police department, and extend the life of these vehicles another year? And what's pretty much the stat, or what do other municipalities, how long do they normally keep their, their vehicles before they replace them? Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at what other municipalities are doing as it pertains to that, but our projections for these three vehicles are that they will be at, let's see, about 86,000 for one vehicle, about 78 for another one, and 81 for another one. Um, so a lot of that has to do with it's not just miles, but the wear and tear on the vehicles, the engine idling. Uh, and, and all of that stuff. Three vehicles, I mean, we have our fleet is, I don't have the total number of vehicles in the fleet with me, but the more we push them off, like Dan said, the maintenance goes up, you worry about them being down and then they aren't being driven and the miles aren't being put on them. Um, you're, you're driving the miles up on the other cars that are <coughs> remaining in the fleet that aren't being maintained. And the more we push them out, raises the likelihood that we have to buy more vehicles in a future year. So we try and spread it out the best we can. We try and project the mileage and the maintenance. And these were the three that, that we felt um, we needed to replace this year and we held off on the others. Do we have a particular range of mileage that we try to say, oh, between 70 and 90,000 miles where we, we need to get rid of these cars or is it the years or what standards do we have? We look at it all. We look at the years. We look at the projected mileage at the time that the vehicles will be replaced. And we also look at the maintenance history on them. So these are, you know, going to be three-year-old vehicles. And back, I don't know, years ago when Dan Palmer was chief, we would replace half of the patrol fleet every year. So we replace half one year and then half the next. And I think those vehicles at the time we're in the range of about 60,000 miles. So over the years, we started to um, pay attention to the maintenance and the mileage. And we said, you know, we really don't need to replace these vehicles as often as we are. So we've only been trying to replace the ones we felt really needed to be replaced. And that's kind of the point that I'm, I'm getting at is that as our technology advances and our cars run and last longer and longer and longer, uh, synthetic oil and everything else in it, uh, you know, you could have a car, people are driving cars 150,000 miles on them day in, day out, absolutely. And uh, so you just wonder, I mean, yeah, I understand that police car is idling a lot and everything else, but they're kind of built for that now as opposed to years ago they weren't. Uh, so I just kind of question, you know, if maybe we should be looking at pushing that mileage even further, maybe 110, 120,000 miles on a car, a vehicle, I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I just think with the vehicles and the technology, uh, it's not the same as it was years ago. And so as, as you changed it years ago to what it is now, perhaps you should be evaluating whether you could go even longer on the mileage. I think anything that we can do to, even if we just stretch out the lifespan another year, I, I talked to a couple departments that I work with, and the, and the lifespan seemed to vary between three years and, and seven years. One community, it's every seven years they're, they're uh, replacing their vehicles. One community just kept running it until it died, you know, until their mechanics, they have uh, mechanics on board, uh, just couldn't fix it anymore. So, I mean, I think if we, if we can stretch it out maybe another year, 
I mean, if you have if you have a vehicle or vehicles right now that are on their last legs, you know, okay. But if we could stretch it out another year, I think that that's a, a little bit more value. And we did just buy the department a nineteen million dollar police station. So yeah, I get that, but. You're talking about emergency vehicles, and when there's an emergency, we need to be able to have the vehicles to respond. So we try and keep them maintained the best as we can. Like I said, we try and only replace what we feel is necessary. If you want us to push these three vehicles off another year or you know, create a policy that we increase the mileage, that, you know, we'll be happy to take a look at that. On, on the average, how many officers are assigned to one car? Two. They work opposite shifts? Yeah. Okay, so when one gets out, the other one gets in. How many days in a row are they working 24 hours a day? Uh, we try and, you know, it all depends on the 12-hour shift, so they run maybe three days in a row. Okay. At the most. So if you, if you took a $24,000 car, started up, let it run for three months, how many miles would we get off of that? Don't answer that question, it's rhetorical. Um, I understand we're trying to save money, but again, these are emergency vehicles. They run 24 hours a day, sometimes for three, four days in a row. 90,000 miles, they're crap. And I've driven them. So I, I, I think we should leave that alone. At no point in the conversation that I ever mentioned that I would want the vehicles to be unsafe. I just want to clarify that because that never came out of my mouth. What it did came out of my mouth is that technology advances and cars are built differently than they were, and perhaps they're more capable of lasting longer than we're giving them credit for. And that's all I'm saying. Having them last and having them to be safe is, is the, the buffer that you have to you know, walk through. What do we get for these when we sell them, Chief? So the the SUVs we're selling now, we get about eight to ten thousand dollars. We see a little bit less for the sedans that we've been selling. So this total cost really isn't thirty three thousand because a five thousand will probably go back into the uh, per vehicle will probably go back into the <laughs> replacement fund, right? If we wait till next year, we'll get two thousand. Correct. And then new new trucks will be thirty six thousand. The um, the vehicles we're selling, we see a lot of repeat buyers because. Um, they like our cars, and uh, we, like, like we said, we see the increased value for those, for those vehicles. Yeah. Well, then there's the, the cost of, you know, fitting them out. Yeah. So it's not just the 33, it's the, yeah. What does it cost to equip a police vehicle? Most of the equipment we reuse, so there is a cost to... Uh, remove the vehicle, remove the equipment from one vehicle and install it in another one. And I don't, I don't have that cost with me. Um, and then there's the cost to add the decals to it to, as well. Are these uh, the three that we we're talking about? Are they the SUVs or are they just cars? These are all SUVs. It says patrol vehicles, so I don't know. Uh, I don't have that information with me about whether sedans or SUVs. They're thirty-three thousand dollars, so I'm going to venture to say they're the patrol vehicles. What do you mean, the the truck? They're, well, they're thirty-three thousand dollars, so what do they use? It's just the, no? the cars. No, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Just they're thirty-three thousand dollars, so I doubt they're the SUVs. Actually, two the ones the ones we're the ones we're buying are all SUVs. I do have the. We're seeking to replace two 2015 Ford Tauruses and one 2015 Ford Explorer. One of the issues we have with the Tauruses is that they're really tight for the officers. One, they have their gun belt and their bulletproof vest and everything on and all the equipment in there, which is why we've been trying to move away from the Tauruses and go with all, of, all Explorers. So let me ask you the, the million dollar question. Does it jeopardize the safety of the community if we don't replace these three vehicles? I think we could probably hold off on, on, on them for another year, but I, I, I can't answer that question with any certainty because I can't predict if they'll break down or not. Yeah. Can I suggest that we get rid of the Tauruses, the two, and, and, keep, and hang on to the um, Explorer? 
and um, give us a chance to kind of take a look at our maintenance records and do some research on the length of what we think would be optimal and then come back with a policy for next year for how we're going to determine what cars get rotated in and out. I'm 100 percent in favor. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Reasonable compromise. I think so. Yeah. And Chief, sorry for putting you on the spot. I know that you, uh, this whole longevity of cars and stuff, you're not an, autom you're not an automotive mechanic. Um, and we really appreciate the answers. You know, it's unpredictable. Um, so we didn't want to put you on the spot. No, and I totally get what Trustee Cameron is saying about advancing technology and things like that. We're happy to, to, to do whatever we can to Tesla's uh, next year. help the budget. Tesla's. Anybody Thank else? you for bringing that up, Trustee Hopkins and Trustee Ranky. I think that's a great point. Um, none for me. If not, then uh, we have nothing else this evening, Mr. President. I think we can adjourn this uh, committee meeting and move back to the uh, to the board for agenda. Adjourn this completely. Oh, you could. No, I'm kind of you adjourn this. Well, okay. It's tricky, <laughs> Robert. Robert. <laughs> uh, adjourn back to the regular. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn back to our regular uh, pre-predetermined. So